Hi, this is Matt Finch. This is uh, Uncle Matt's D&D studio, and with me here, I have Jason McCartan. And the reason that I've got him on the air is that he has just now published a really uh, interesting resource that I wanted to bring to people's attention, and I'll let him talk about it in just a second, but so that I'm the one that gets to do the uh, the real quick summary of it and don't waste his time with that, I'll say that it's a, a book that's a resource of ideas and skills and tactics for players in a fantasy role-playing game, um, which is a real nice twist since most of the things that come out are actually for Dungeon Masters, and this is a different sort of resource. So, um, Jason, take it away for a little while. Tell us about the. Uh, uh, tell us first, first of all, about what the book is supposed to do. All right, thanks, Matt, and I appreciate you having me on here to talk about it. Um, lack of sleep is probably going to make me like blink a lot while we're talking. Um, so, through Dungeons Deeper, uh, it originally started off as, as an idea um, where I play role playing games with kids at one of the local libraries every every month or so. There's like two or one or two sessions that we have. And we do a lot of old school dungeon crawling. And I have a table full of young ladies who are fantastic. They're amazing role players. They're, they're teenagers. They're crazy. Sometimes they go off the wall. They're perfect old school gamers. But they sometimes don't belong on to a lot of the stuff that we know and we take for granted. So I kind of wanted to put a resource together where I could hand it to them and say, here's how you become more effective dungeoneers. I looked around on the internet and looked at all the publishing that everybody had been done and I actually used your idea of a primer. Um, you know, your old school primer is, is the genesis of this and said, you know what, there's something out there for GMs, but there's nothing out there for players. And it took a long time for me to decide to do this. And so I started putting it together and said, what's the best way to teach people this stuff? Well, let them have fun. And how do we do that? Well, we have an asshole who writes the book and explains stuff that's going on. That's basically the main character of the book. It gives you his advice, seen through his eyes, how best to be a dungeon crawler and survive being a dungeoneer. Because he's managed it. So if he can do it, everybody else can do it. And the uh, that is, that is one of the big humor points in in the book too. I mean, it is written in character uh, by a D and D character, and and a colorful one at that. And and so that it's it, it's a very very fun read while you're going through it. Um, he actually he's not a D and D character. He's actually a Warhammer fantasy role play character it's based on a character I actually played with a good friend of mine many 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 years ago. He had a different last name, but. Um, I changed it to protect the innocent. Well, he's not so innocent, so um, you know. But it's based on it's the same idea. I mean, in, in Britain, we grew uh, we grew up pretty much playing I with our D and D, and if it wasn't D and D, it was Warhammer. And so, you know, I just I just wanted to have a character that I, I was attached to, and, and would allow me to say things that you know um, that makes as if it sounds as if it's coming from the horse's mouth, you know. Yeah, and that's and that's definitely one of the fun things in the book. Now, what the book is is it's a the, the 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 largest portion of it is basically a series of tips. And one of the things that I was struck with when I was reading it, um, and and I'm getting I, I'm getting a little off into the weeds here, but one of the first things that I thought about was, okay, this is going to work well if you have a good DM who's capable of setting things up this way, but. Um, this almost can be used as a flip side as well for a dungeon master to learn about what they should be doing from their side of the screen. So, I mean, talk a little bit about the kind of tips that, that you've got in there. Okay, so you know what? Um, that was me being subtle. I, I wrote, Although the book is written for players primarily, it's also written for, for DMs and GMs for them to be able to say, oh, here's, here's some stuff I can do. Here's what my players are expecting. So here's some ways that I can maybe counter or give me some ideas that, that I can make my games better. And so basically, there are there's two major parts to it at the beginning. One is the ten dungeon axioms, truths that basically cover all types of dungeons that have ever been created. Um, I'm sure there's more if I was going to spend more time on working on it, but those ten are nice, they're succinct, they, they cover everything. Seventy eight tips in there, basically the rules, as uh, as Maximilian likes to say, and they basically tell you some important things like you know fight wisely, you know make sure that you prepare ahead of time, know what you're getting into. Uh, know the type of monsters and, or, or opponents that you're going to come up against. Know what your role is in in the group. Um, you know, so it's, it's basically all sorts of stuff that you can build on piece by piece. And, and part of the reason in breaking it into lots of different rules was that I could categorize specific information. I could cross reference it, and it would allow people to learn it easily. You know, you don't have to read the book cover to cover. Um, you actually can just like jump in and look at a rule, and then it might bounce out to another rule. And then you, you start learning it, and then you start playing it as you play. Now, when you're talking about rules, also, this is probably a good um, place to point out that 
Um, there are a lot of resources out there that try and be rules agnostic and don't do a very good job of it because mm -hmm. the author really can't keep from mucking around giving advice about rules. Yep. None of this, none of this that I could see had anything to do with a specific set of rules, but it was common sense and yep. tactics and strategy that it really struck me. This will work not even with any old school Renaissance game. This, this would work literally with any a uh, role-playing game in which there's in which there's, there's player skill involved. I see the easy way for me to sell this to people playing modern and science fiction games is to reskin it with an, a secret agent or a or you know an alien. Uh, no, but you're right. The, the whole idea was to make it as agnostic as possible. Uh, it, it, you can play D and D. You can play uh, Warhammer. You can play uh, GURPS. You know GURPS uh, Dungeon. Um, you can play. Uh, Pathfinder 5th edition. The, the rules in here are pretty much across the board. You can use them with anyone because it is about character. It's about how you play the game uh, and, it, and it lets you... Um, you're totally separated from the rules. You're right, there's a lot of games out there that will give you advice, but it's for a specific system. I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have something that you know you could apply once to many, many different things. Well, and I really, uh, you know, in particular was... Uh interested by the fact that in in a lot of ways given the fact that what you surgically focused on as being player skill rather than character skill this is actually you were saying that you based some of it on the on the primer for old school gaming yeah. that i had written this is actually in a lot of ways i think a better primer for old school oh. gaming than the yeah. one that i'd written cuz what it does is uh, instead of just giving broad theoretical ideas, you really got into the trenches and said, okay, look, this is what this idea of challenging the player's skill is all about. Let's start breaking it down. Here are some of the particulars that are in there. So, yeah. you know, I, I really, I thought it was great. So um, in a previous life last year and slightly before that, I used to teach. So I'm a big fan of constructivist learning. And the idea behind constructive is learning is that you take what people know and you build on it by presenting them with information and they make their own truth and their own understanding of what's going on. So that's player skill. Every single old school game that's out there has an old school focus. It's all about what the players can do, not what the characters can do. Um, characters are there, there as your avatar, as a way to interact with other players. But it is player skill that you're totally focused on. You hit on that in your primer, the, the whole main vase thing, you know. Um, so, so, so there's that, and I wanted players to feel empowered. This is this is all about making them empowered to be able to play the game, and, and so that they're really enjoying it, and they're the ones that are getting the challenge, and they're the ones that are learning all this stuff. Every other book that is a strategy guide that is out for even fourth edition or even Pathfinder, it's strategy for building characters. It's it's system focused. It's about how do we optimize builds? How do we do things within the game that are built around the mechanics? I don't think you need to go that far. I think you can like, take it at a higher level and, and focus on what players want to do. Yeah, no, I, th I think that's uh, you know a really good point. And so let me go ahead and uh, once again, um, what we're talking about here is uh, Jason McCartan's book, Through Dungeons Deeper, A Survival Guide for Dungeoneers. Um, and that's on, uh, and, and I this is, this is one I've taken a look at. I, I really, um, I, I, I would recommend that people take a look at this. I think there's really something to this book. Um, so now Jason is, and so having turned it slightly into a commercial, Jason, where is it, <laughs> where's, where is it available now so that people know? And then I'll, I'll put a link to that under the video as well. If people want to go take a look at it. I appreciate it, Matt. It is available right now on drive through RPG and RPG now, which is one bookshelf. It's also available on the Infinite Badger web store, um, which not many people know about, you know, my company, Infinite Badger Press, which is basically me. The plan is to release the print-on-demand version on one bookshelf as well. Uh, so if you if you buy the PDF now, you'll get the print version at a discount, which is the same price as the, the PDF is, which is basically half price. Uh, there will be print copies coming to Lulu and hopefully Amazon as well. I'm, I'm working on getting that done. But it's going to be a few weeks before that that's available. You, you know, the proofing process and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, great. Jason, thanks so much for coming on the show. I'm going to go ahead and stop it at this point so that we don't end up with something that's, you know, super, super long and complicated. Sure. Um, so, uh, every, so, so uh, you go ahead and say goodbye to everybody in the studio audience. And then All right, goodbye to everybody in the studio audience. <laughs> thank you, uh, Matt, for letting me come along and, and talk about this. Um, and thank and you. So, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and, you know, just uh, follow Maxie's advice and just, you know, it'll, it'll see you right most of the time. <laughs> you know.
So thanks, everybody. And whatever kind of D&D &D it is that you play, imagine the hell out of it.